हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल जूलॉजिस्ट ए के एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट स्कल बोन्स सो स्कल इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वेल अबाउट इट्स बोनी स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट वन इज कॉन्ड्रोक्रेनियम कॉन्ड्रोक्रेनियम इज ए ब्रेन बॉक्स और ए क्रेनियम बॉक्स दैट इज ए हार्ड स्ट्रक्चर एंड इट प्रोटेक्ट द सेरिब्रल पार्ट cerebrum is the main thinking part of the brain and it also consist two sensory capsule one is auditory capsules or otic capsule and another one is the optic capsule one is optic capsule and another one is auditory or otic capsule so auditory and otic capsule is related to ear and play major role in hearing and optic capsule is related to eye and play a major role in visual receptors splenocranium splenocranium consists the facial bones facial bones like premaxilla maxilla palatine pterygoids so all these bones which are going to understand in this particular lecture are consisted in within splenocranium that are facial bones that form our cheek bones our jaws and our nasal bones our forehead bones chondrocranium chondrocranium is formed by cranium cavity and it is about 1475 cubic centimeter in a adult man and has a large middle opening but means a gap a space in between the cavity that is known as foramen magnum and here in this foramen magnum our vertical column fits with or uh, articulate or form a joint with this occipital and this foramen magnum is present in a hind brain and two sense capsule that are consisted within chondrocranium first one is optic capsule optic is related to eye and second one is auditory or otic capsule that is related to hearing it is which chondrocranium is divided into occipital zone parietal zone frontal ethmoidal and sense capsule we can see here it is uh, divided into two parietal zone two temporal zone to one occipital zone one ethmoid zone one sphenoid bone and one frontal zone so these all zones consistently form this chondrocranium one is our occipital zone occipital zone consist supra occipital supra occipital on its dorsal side this one is the supra occipital that is present on its dorsal side and base occipital that is present in the ventral side and another one is two exo occipital two exo occipital are present on the lateral side this region is the occipital zone which is the hind part of the cranium and foramen magnum this open space this cavity is foramen magnum where our vertebral column will articulate articulate means form a joint with occipital condyle so here foramen magnum is present in the ventral side below below the cranium and two occipital condyles these are the condyle region and these are two in number that's why we call it two and because it is in the occipital zone that's why we call it as two occipital condyle these are at the junction of supra occipital and the exo occipital this one is the supra occipital and this one is the exo occipital so both join in the condyle region is parietal zone you can see here in this picture this one is the parietal zone and this one is the dorsal side and inside it will be the ventral side so 
A parietal zone consists two sides, dorsal and ventral. And dorsal side has three bone, two parietal, this one and this one. And one will be in between these two parietal bone that will known as one inter parietal bone. And on the ventral side, three bones are present. One basi, uh, basi sphenoid and that will attach with the pituitary foramen where pituitary gland will open foramen is a space gap or cavity where ligaments blood vessels nerves will pass or create a connectivity with bones and two allosphenoids these are allosphenoid bones that are present here and it is the ventral side of the brain bone there are two frontal bones that are present in the dorsal side each frontal bone has a process called supraorbital bone process of frontal supraorbital process of uh, frontal and two orbitospinoid these are two orbitospinoids and two prespinoids these are two prespinoids and two orbitospinoids form the part of this frontal bone that are present on the ventral side and this one is present on the dorsal side ethmoid bone this portion is known as the ethmoid region ethmoid region here you can say these are ethmoid bone this is also known as ethmoid bone so this ethmoidal zone has one circular plate called cerebriform plate that is located at the base of the skull and it has two perforation perforation for exit of one cranial nerve so that it could connect with the spinal cord and pass the signal to different part of the body so this cerebriform plate present in the ethmoid region where nerve will passes to the spinal cord to maintain the connectivity of information is sense capsule i said that in chondrocranium there are two sense capsule first one is optic capsule optic means it is related to eye so one pair of optic capsule present in frontal zone it is present in the frontal zone and it is made up of seven pair of bones prefrontal frontal interior orbital post orbital infra orbital supra orbital and lacrimal as you can see here optic capsule that is eye capsule is formed by orbital plate and this orbital plate will be divided into four anterior posterior infra orbital and supra orbital region and then there will be the lacrimal uh, gland or bone sorry and the prefrontal and post frontal part this one will be the prefrontal and post frontal part so in frog this optic capsule is absent and one bone between two eye capsule that is known as interorbital septum will also present and it will only present in case of mammals second one is auditory or optic capsule so this auditory and optic Optic capsule will be located between occipital and parietal zone of the skull bone, and it will consist two parts. First one is tympanic bulla, and second one is externally auditory meatus, and it will be formed by five pair of bones, means ten bones. First pair is preotic, second epiotic, third is ophistotic, and fourth is sphenoitic, and fifth one teroitic. Teroitic participate in the formation of optic capsule in case of frog only and in case of mammals for example in rabbit second pair that is the uh, first pair that is the preotic and second pair that is the epiotic and third pair that is the ophistotic these pair will fuse to form a fusion bone that will be known as teroitic and it will form the auditory capsule in case of mammals membranous labyrinth is enclosed in the preotic and the tympanic bulla tympanic bulla of mammals and second part two parts two are two parts are present there first one is outer spongy part that will be known as the terrace part and second will when will be the bony part that will be the inner part and it is known as mastoid part
Next is splachnocranium. Splachnocranium is also known as a facial region or it consists of facial bones and these are formed by visceral skeleton and visceral skeleton is formed by visceral arches which are 7 in pairs. If they are 7 in pairs it means they are 14 in number. So these 14 numbers are first is mandibular arc, second is hyoid arc and third to seventh pair are known as branchial arches but their na name are third is pair serratohyle, sec uh, fourth is epihyle, fifth is stylohyle, sixth is tympanohyle and seventh one is thyrohyle. So first let us talk about mandibular arc. Mandibular arc is made up of two arches. It is made up of two arches. First uh, uh, arch that will form the upper jaw and second will form the lower jaw. In tadpole stays upper jaw. In tadpole stays upper jaw of mandibular arc is formed by fusion of three cartilages called palatine, pterygoid and quadrate. These are fused to form palato, palato, pterygo, pterygo, quadrate because it is formed by fusion of palatine, pterygoid and quadrate cartilages. And lower jaw or second part of mandibular arch is cartilaginous initially and it is known as Meckel's cartilage which soon changes into bony structure as a child grows up. So second is the upper, uh, second one is the hyoid arc. But before that, we will talk about the upper jaw. Upper jaw is made up of 14 bones. That is the mandibular arc. We will talk about here mandibular arc, upper and lower jaw collectively. First one is the upper jaw. The upper jaw is made up of 14 bones that is 7 pair of bones which are pre-maxilla, maxilla, jugal uh, bone, squamous, uh, squamosal bone and pterygoid bone, quadrate bone and palatine bones. These are 7 pair of bones that result in the formation of palato pterygo quadrate that is the upper jaw that is formed by the first vis visceral arches and this first visceral arches is known as the mandibular arch. Out of these seven pairs of bone only quadrate only quadrate only quadrate are not visible because they constitute second ear ossicle. Second ear ossicle is incus region. In man, the nasal cavity is separated from the buccal cavity by a bone known as palatine bone. That is the part of upper jaw. Palate of bird is identical in animal kingdom which is used for birds classification. And if I talk about process of upper jaw, processes of upper jaw, upper jaw, so these are Premaxilla, premaxilla, premaxilla is known as the nasal process that are known as the nasal process and it is present on dorsal side which are covered by nasal cavity and palatine process of premaxilla it is covered by nasal and palatine cavity of the pre-maxilla. Second one, second one is, this was the first one and second one will be the maxilla. Maxilla is the nasal process of maxilla, palatine process of maxilla, gigotic process of maxilla. These are nasal process, palatine process and zygomatic process. Next one is squamosal. Next one is squamosal. Ska muscle. Only zygomatic process is present in squamosal bone. Now, let's understand about the lower jaw that is firstly formed by a cartilage known as the Meckel cartilage, and these both are formed by the mandibular arc that is the first visceral 
arches that is the first vircular visceral arch so lower jaw is composed of six pair of bones that is 12 number of bones these are articular angular spin splenial splenial dentary carotenoid and supra angular in frog out of six pair only fair four pairs of bones are present and only three pairs form lower jaw one pair forms the first ear ossicle that is columella oris and remaining three pairs are angular angular splenial and the dentary region that dentary region that will form the lower lower jaw in case of frog in case of frog upper jaw in vertebrates is completely ossified ossified means it is bony and it is connected articulated with skull but lower jaw is free from chondrocranium and it hangs downwardly a bone hangs upper jaw from lower jaw this bone is known as suspension suspensorium suspensorium and a skull in which suspensorium is formed by quadrate bone by quadrate bone quadrate bone is a bone of upper jaw a suspensorium that is formed by quadrate bone is called otostylic skull is known as otostylic skull and this skull is present in case of frog skull and if a skull is suspended by the suspensorium with the help of squamosal bone with the help of squamosal bone it is known as cranio craniostylic skull this is known as craniostylic skull and this type of skull is present in rabbit and rabbit is, comes under the class mammalia next one is hyoid arc hyoid arc it is also one pair which is hyoid proper and second one is hyomandibular hyoid proper is a horseshoe shaped bone in our neck between the lower jaw and larynx larynx is also known as voice box or sound box and adapts apple after puberty in case of male and it is art do not articulate it means it do not form any joint it does not form any joint to any bone but simply suspended by means of temporal bone or ligament temporal bones are the bones of chondrocranium and it has two presses on each side of the body of hyoid bone first one is greater cornea ya cornua and second is lesser cornua do two process are there it sport our tongue which hyoid proper sport our tongue and it is absent in fishes because branchial arches are present there and they will form the gill rectus in case of fishes as there are no presence of lungs and there are presence of gill that are covered by operculum or gill covering and here these branchial arches will form gill rectus in case of fish which will sport this gills through which a fish respire in collaboration with branchial arches forms hard aperture in ter terrestrial vertebrates but this hyoid bone will collaborate will join with branchial arches and will form this hyoid apparatus in case of terrestrial vertebrates like humans like reptiles right like birds next one is hyomandibular it is second part of hyoid arc which constitutes ear ossicles in vertebrates in frog hyomandibular form stapedial palate plate which is second ear ossicle which is dot or lid like bone in rabbit hyomandibular form steps which is third ear ossicle 
that is tripped in like uh, bone so ear ossicles are first second and third third ear ossicle third ear bones are there first one is malleus second one is incus and third one is steps malleus is articular bone incus is quadrate and steps is hyomandibular and it is hammer shaped it is anvil shaped and it is strip shaped come to the skull of man first is frontal bone frontal forms forehead forms forehead and upper part of eye orbit a new bone in front display a fent suture in midline in midline here in the midline of frontal that disappear by age of 6 years and if it persist that it is known as metopic sutures second one is the parietal bone it articulate means it join to frontal bone and forms main bulging to main bulging and sides of cranium these sides lateral sides of the cranium third one is occipital bone it articulate with parietal bone means it forms a joint with parietal bone and form the posterior means end part of the cranium and lower part of cranium foramen magnum that is the gap is a large perfor perforation in this bone or a gap or a cavity in the bone on each side of foramen the occipital condyles are present which are a prominent elevation and condyles articulate the skull with first vertebra that is atlas next is temporal next one is temporal bones and they form the lower part of right and left side and floor of the cranium which will only visible through the ventral side of the cranium sphenoid is a butterfly shaped bone that forms a middle and interior part of a base of a cranium in front of con occipital in the middle and temporal side sphenoid with cella tarsica depression that is present for pituitary bone that is the master gland uh, sorry pituitary uh, gland that is the master gland in humans next is ethmoid bone this is a sphenoid bone and it is the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone and it this one is a temporal bone ethmoid bone is small irregular bone in front of sphenoid bone this is the sphenoid bone and in front of this is the ethmoid bone that will form that is present behind the nasal bone because this is the nasal bone and it is present behind the nasal bone and it contribute to the architecture of eye orbit and proximal part of nasal chambers next one is the facial bones of man first is nasals as you can see these are two nasal bones small oblong bone in middle of upper part of face fro forming proximal part of the bridge of our nose the remaining lower part of our nose is formed of cartilage second is inferior nasal which is known as conchi or turbinates two highly coiled two highly coiled scroll like process of ethmoid bones are known as conchiae that project into each nasal cavity from lateral wall of the proximal bony part of nasal chamber one is superior and another one is middle conchi because it is formed by a separate bone which is named as inferior nasal conchi second ne or next one is vomber vomber is a thin vomber is a thin elongated plate like bone it is a plate like bone and it forms a part of septum that separate two nasal cavity right and left cavity next one is lacrimals lacrimals are small small and thin finger shaped bones these are finger shaped bones and present in the inner side of eye orbit and these are form the passes for tear ducts for tear ducts next one is zygomatics this one is a zygomatic these are cheek bones zygomatic are cheek bone and they 
forms a prominence of our cheeks and parts of the floor and side wall of eye orbit next one is palatine palatine l shaped bones palatines are l shaped bones these are l shaped bones that form the back or posterior back or posterior of the roof of the mouth roof of the mouth maxilla these are maxilla maxilla forms the upper jaw bone that is a major bone of the face next one is mandible mandible is the largest bone this one is the large bone and this one is the largest bone of our face and strongest of all bone of the body is the mandible it forms the entire lower jaw and bears all lower jaw teeth and articulate with temporal bone of the skull temporal bone of the skull and it is the only bone of the skull that moves